tanking strats, I feel like most of the time G2 would just save an entire map rather than saving individual strats on maps that they play. So it's more likely that just whatever map they're not playing is where they're, where they're stashing those strats. There goes the Lion Ban, which is something uh, G2 definitely would have done. G2 always bans Lion. Yeah, that's where, one of those times where you go, why? <laughs> As Fabian says, what do we do now? <laughs> what do you ban next? What do they take out? It's going to be Dokubi. And Dokubi does get quite a bit of play from Chaos. So that's a pretty smart ban yeah. overall. And Dokubi is kind of like a mini lion in the sense you, that you have to stand still. You know to who turn else off. I'd consider? Montaigne, from the way Renewals plays it. Just as a target ban. A very valid point. They'll also eliminate Maestro here, very powerful operator. And then I'm going to imagine that they're going to dare Chaos to take out Mira, which would make an awful lot of sense. Yeah, very likely to happen. Obviously, it happened last match as well, as it happens many matches on Coastline. So, there it is. Overall, mostly predictable, although the Dokubi ban is a little less common, I would say, than these other bans. We definitely saw Maestro do a bit of work last match, so in this row, we're going to have Echo instead to take his place. They are going to start down in Kitchen here. Let's see how that goes for them in terms of if they can take the site. I mean, that's good, because this is the site they should be able to take. If they cannot... Chances are the other bomb sites might not do much better, but we did see a little bit of a different take on that, I suppose, last match in that some teams just couldn't take Kitchen, but were able to take sites like Hookah instead. Go get, get it. And rather than picking that glass, sneak it in. But that leaves them with no hard breacher now. So that should be interesting to see. They'll just shoot their way in, I suppose. I mean, it's not it's not crucial to run a hard breacher on Kitchen. No, it's not. I mean, where's your Heart Breacher going to go? I mean, the way we saw from Millennium was Millennium were using it, we're using it to, to open up Sunrise Bar. You might use it on the wall where Red Groove is playing right now. You might use it on one of the hatches above, but I mean, that is so infrequent. There are no hatches over the actual site. And I mean, a lot of teams are going to open these hatches up to begin with. The wall right now that leads to Kitchen as well that is being jointly reinforced by both the Dock as well as the Smoke. That's a possibility too, but a lot of teams will also open that up. So, I mean, there's not a ton that you necessarily need a hard breacher to do on. That's, of course, if they don't kick, it's going to be safe. Five seconds left. I mean, which is likely, but that, you know, that. Yes, they, they definitely don't need it for the site, but they had to have kind of known that it was a site they didn't need one for. To be fair, the only sites where you absolutely, I would say, oh, oh, oh so long, the best player in the world will not be able to show off his skills in now round number one. the best player in the world. That is very correct. A spawn peak from Renewals will come out and take out Fabi in the buck. Yikes. Well, good start there, but the, this team is one that definitely will be able to survive without him, and he'll just spend his time shouting into their ears instead. I was going to say, the only site where a hard breacher, I would say, is 100% required for most team strats would probably be penthouse and field. Oh, yeah. Everywhere Penthouses. outside of that, it's possible to pull off a strategy without it. I mean, it's possible yeah. to do the same thing on penthouse theater. It's just a lot more difficult. So Oftentimes, I mean, it's just the Habana can open up sight lines. It's not necessarily about movement paths. Very early on, you're going to see Pengu try to take the fight with the Legion of Secretly up top, anticipating a run out. Great read from Pengu onto Crips, but Jonas gets down, Kanto gets down. It's Pengu really just trying to put in tons of work. You got Snookin, Renewals, and Red Groove left. Pengu trying to make sure that that goo mine that's in his foot, not able to continue to just tick away at his HP. Goga on one HP himself, he's just gonna use the smokes and create a highway for him to just continue to march in on. Very clutchable from Pengu here, but a great start from Chaos. Took 90 seconds and they just match G2's aggression head on and they come away with quite a lead. Well, and you can see that Snooko was able to get a double kill, too, with the smoke. That's, you don't often see that, especially this early in a round. So just very nice play with him in terms of getting the smoke in the right place at the right time. Goga not even going to bother with the reset, though. Now a rare miss from Pengu there, as Goga will now need to do all the rest of the work, just waiting for the smoke to go through the open hole that's been created. And two shots to the waist will be all it takes. Attacking. This is very clutchable, but no, Red Groove holding a tight angle. No real chance for Goga to make it around that corner. As Red Groove does not miss. And Chaos, a very impressive start here on Kitchen. Winning the site that you're expected to win. We'll see how they're able to 
work the next two sites out. His kitchen will be unlocked on round number four. Well, like I said, it is not unexpected at all to see G2 lose some initial rounds as they feel things out. But nonetheless, that definitely was some good play as well. Like I said, especially from Snooken, who got a 3K that round two of those with that early smoke. Nice play by him. And they definitely shut down a lot of that initial push on the outside. Of course, that spawn peak onto uh, Fabian was also a nice way to make sure that that round was going to be especially tilted for G2. I mean, you combine that that spawn peak kill with the two smoke kills, and it's just such a bad position for G2 to be in at that point, halfway into the round. Secretly so going to pretend he's going to pick that clash and actually sneak it over to a pulse. Should be interesting with Kanto also trying to bring some trickery here. They are going to be going on to Hookah, though. That's something we're talking about. Some teams were able to defend fairly well last match. We'll see how Chaos fare on that. Need to locate it's an interesting second choice. Is I, I do think Bar is a better site, but... I guess teams have been figuring out some good ways to attack that, so a lot more teams are starting to bring Puka just for some variability and some decent defensive strategies that they can bring just because sometimes it's easy for the attackers to attack yeah, from above, whereas maybe not always as easy when it is on the second floor, and they, they are taking advantage of that a lot of times. Is you're not necessarily going to get a lot of pressure from below except with a buck, whereas a sledge or a buck or even a number of players that can bring breach charges are able to open up the floor to attack from above. So it, there is a lot more vertical play that's going to be established on you if you're in bar versus if you're playing in hookah. It's interesting because prior to operator bans, hookah was always the one site that was very rarely played. In fact, it was only picked in some regions one, two, maybe three times, period. But also keep in mind that that was when there was a different site rotation as well. Yeah. You only needed to go to one site before the site could unlock again. Now so you need to go to two. So penthouse kitchen basically is all you had to do. Yeah, and I mean you'd see a lot of teams do that, or maybe they'd go maybe they'd go penthouse. You know the double bars as well. But I think Pengu was anticipating <laughs> having breaching charges, but a Claymore, wrong loadout. Yeah, Claymore is a. Uh, Claymore's not gonna open up that hatch over top of bathroom, but he does happen to have a grenade launcher. Fabian also can open it with his uh, skeleton key, but he probably just want a grenade launcher option for speed. This is a seldom used angle that we see here. It appears every now and then, but I think a lot of teams will <laughs> typically forget about it. Pengu does spot <laughs> Renewal is playing down below on that drone, and then Renewal is possibly wondering if he's going to get pushed from the service doorway. We'll walk over in that direction. Secretly gets spotted out, playing inside a blue bar. So long, farewell. Kanto first kill, Fabian a second on the snookin. The smoke is gone. And then the dock of Crips is trying to get back in towards the penthouse theater side of things. This does mean that at best there's two members of Chaos on site. Renewals will manage to get back though and he'll take out Fabian. Pengu's still trying to hunt one down as he just misses. Does not have the reflexes needed to take out Red Groove and the anticipatory shot will miss. Crips picks up his second kill. So long, Goga. Plank goes down quite successfully from G2. So they are in the driver's seat here, and they just need to play keep away. Pengu will find a kill on the Red Groove, leaving Renewals and Crips, the two ACOGs of the GIGN. And Crips gets down, tries to heal himself, gets picked back up. Oh, but there's a defuse going off to Renewals. They don't know. Pengu pulls out the pistol, and, well, Renewals falls off the defuser and tries to just simply duel his way out, but can't land the punches that he needs. Bit too long range there as Pengu gets it and G2 bounces back after losing the first round. You can see G2 slowly warming up here as that was much more like what I would expect from that, that round, but it just felt like they haven't quite finished waking up just yet. I mean, you saw Pengu try to put a Claymore on a hatch. So they're obviously still kind of getting their bearings, although uh, definitely much better round from them that time. Now they don't have to switch off a of hookah here, but they are gonna go bar instead. Try to change things up a little bit, see if it works this time. Was unfortunate they lost Snookin so early that last time, and I think that made it much easier for operators like Glass to be able to just smoke things out, play the way he wanted to play. There was a few missed shots, uh, like from Pengu. He did struggle to hit that lesion towards the end as well, but eventually he hit the headshot. It looked like he just didn't even care about body shots. He was just trying to tap that head. Eventually succeeded at doing that. Goga's glass has been working fairly well as well. I mean, we don't always see him playing uh, glass. He used to play a lot of thermite. So it's interesting to see him kind of shifting roles a little bit, but I would say fairly successful. This is part of the reason you see glass banned so often on this map. And working out well for him, but Pengu there with four. Do quite a bit of work for his team. Would like to note that there are no hard breachers banned, but G2 acting like all three of them are. They just don't, they don't care. They, they know the angles to push in through the doorways. They're using a lot of smoke as well. 
and just taking full advantage of that. They have the, you know, the smokes that they can throw, plus they have the Capital able to set up the smokes as well. So I guess they just don't feel like they need it because they're just going to push into site and plant. They don't really need to open up those extra site lanes. And as you said, there's only really one bomb site that tends to require it, and we have yet to go to that bomb site. So, round number three here, and I like the innovation from G2, this pugilist style where you just need to out-punch your opponent. That's all. Just make sure that you're able to strike them harder and faster, and more often than they can strike you back. And I mean, it's, it, it worked in one round. I mean, it didn't really come that close in the second round, but I think Chaos understand what G2 bring as an adversary, and Chaos need to take advantage of catching G2 off guard. And that's why you're seeing these spawn peaks going on. Renewal's there, getting scarily close to actually losing to Kanto in a gunfight. He'll heal up and head off. As you see, that Stim Pistol will slowly but surely expire. The ACOG that is being run, and ACOG's in fact being run quite frequently from Chaos. They've had almost two on every single round so far. And they're actually bringing the Echo this time, which they teased before in Six Pick off them. But I think that's a good idea because you want someone that can stop the uh, Diffuse Plant with, without contesting them in the gunfights that they tend to lose against a team like G2. So, hey, do it from a safer spot. But they are running an IQ with Fabian this time on that instead of uh, Buck. So that is going to be the big counter to that. I mean, the one the one thing that goes with an Echo on this double bar site is that's where we see Chaos defending, is that the Echo downstairs has a lot of importance being able to watch both of those bar sites. And it's typical for teams to plant very close and tight to that doorway inside of the foyer and then just get out of there. Throw a couple of smokes down, maybe bait out the smokes of your opponents, which in this case would be snooking, and then you just plant and get back. As you see from G2, they have four smokes available, two in the hands of the glass, two in the hands of the Capitao, and through his crossbow. So they can get that easy plant right off. Good pre-fire there from Fabian onto the door, getting a nice mark, but oh, he'll miss the shot on Crips, playing around the main desk. Kanto takes out the smoke of Snookin. So that's a pretty high priority target. Goga using both of his smoke grenades to try and go in, and he's just gonna miss as a body crosses in front of him and he's firmly inside of the site. He'll go for a plant, and amidst the chaos, asphyxiating bolts go down, trying to hold everybody at bay. Pangu watching for anybody to push out through the main lobby. Jonas and Kanto doing the rest of the work, a double kill for Jonas, and a triple kill for Jonas. G2 making easy work of their opponents there as the diffuser going down quite successfully from the glass and doing all of this without a hard breacher. Well, it's as impressive as it is astonishing. Yeah, how often do you see a glass walk into the site go behind bar and plant with no one contesting him at all. That was definitely an unusual attack round, to say at least, not just because of the lack of hard breaches, but because of the way the attack was being played. I mean, great kill on Fabian, though. Nice, uh, smart play in terms of rotating around the backside of that desk area to go for the peak. I mean, Fabian did have the call out from the ping, but it seemed whoever gave him that ping wasn't paying attention after that. Otherwise, they could have called out that he was rotating to the other side. It looked, like there, it looked like there might have been two bodies in there as well. Yeah. It, it certainly looked like chaos from our from our limited field of view. It did look like chaos had two bodies playing in the, in the main lobby. Definitely could have been the other person rotating around on that for sure. It's We, we only have silhouettes a lot of times to kind of tell off of. And sometimes you can tell what operator is off those silhouettes, but sometimes the skins as well of the characters can modify those silhouettes. The location of a bomb. So we'll see though. Advantage here going to G2, not unexpectedly, but we are seeing Chaos put up a little bit of a fight here. They managed to get the first round. They put up a bit of fight that round, but I feel like they were just definitely outplayed, especially towards the end of that last round. Just getting destroyed at that point. They seemed to uh, to lose Fabian fairly often in the beginning, and so that was definitely going to be, in the theory, a big problem because then the Echo could have had a little more free reign to stop that plant, but it just seemed like they were so focused on all the other attackers, just letting Goga walk into sight like that. Good cams getting tossed down from Red Goog. Saw the one that went in the main lobby just by that big double door, the um, uh, Lamborghini doorway, I believe it is referred to as. It'll give a line of sight all the way down the hallway leading towards Sunrise Bar. It'll also give you the door that's in the bathroom and possibly some line of sight into the bathroom and that bathroom wall that can be shot out from the attackers as well. well a little bit of a slow approach here from Kanto. is already about 30 seconds has been burned and he's still kind of hanging out in the pool area. Must have been doing some early droning for his team. But at least they didn't get spawn peaked, and that might have been his biggest concern, of course, was 
They are definitely willing to spawn peek on this. Aaron Shiro continuing to play that dock to be able to do so. But he obviously, and he might have gone for the spawn peek for this round, but it obviously didn't land any kills. So everyone at full health, at least for the first minute. There's a rotate inside of that theater wall for secretly. Is he's also going to use those goo mines just to try and keep his attackers at bay. And I mean, he loses two of them to the IQ of Fabian and then falls back. He has the ability to go down the stairs into main lobby if he needs to do so. So a rotate in hand available for him. As well, worth noting that Pengu has brought the breaching charges now onto the Zofia. So no more running that Claymore. He'll be able to do some soft destruction from above. We've seen a number of teams do this. This is not out of the ordinary by any stretch of the imagination, especially if a team forgoes running a sledge, a buck, even a jackal with that secondary shotgun. Ooh, great kill there by Kanto. And this Crips going down. One of the decent fraggers on the team. Unfortunately, it looks like he went for a flank on the white stairs. It's not work. Fabian finally getting a kill as Goga follows up. There just seems to be no, there, there seems to be no thought process whatsoever to how G2 are able to walk away with these kills. And I mean, they're just, they're getting them all over the map. I believe it is referred to as um, freebies. Yeah. And then Kanto just, you know, sees the Valkyrie and unfortunate timing for Red Group. He falls out of ADS at the last second. And as he tries to get back in, just isn't capable of of doing much else. Diffuser went down in the background just as the round came to its conclusion. So G2 have managed to get Diffuser down in three rounds now so far. All three in a row. All three of the major victories. And ever since that first round, it seems like G2 were able to find their footing and are hurtling towards a very possible quick end to this match. But Chaos will at least be able to go on to attack after this. And we, as we say so many times, you expect to walk away with at minimum two rounds on attack. So this gap could close for Chaos's final defense before they get to attack. They got to try one more time. Hookah and Billiards upstairs. They went here in the second round. They failed to defend it successfully. Kitchen has been the only place that, they w that it actually worked on. And that was all the way back in round number one. Yeah, definitely a long time ago at this rate, the way that uh, G2 are Attackers playing. It is it is almost uh, comical that they're getting the diffuse plants down because it doesn't seem to make any real difference in the round. It's almost just extra points at that point because of the way that you see once the diffuse plant's down, you see the kill feed just kill after kill coming out at the end of the round where they just seem to be all over the map catching everyone off guard at the same time once that diffuse plant happens. There's not even really a, a chance for them to attempt to retake. It's just massacre at that point but i gotta give I, I gotta imagine a lot of that is good map knowledge good flexibility from g2 and good call outs as well you see a lot of coordination among these guys making sure that they know where everyone is at from chaos pretty much at all times once they've got some element of map control and that seems to just be leading to kill after kill all in a row once they actually decide to collapse which seems to be coordinated close to when the plant goes down and most of the site seems to be fairly abandoned by the time they go for a plant just not really being contested. I like that you mentioned the retake potential here because I don't exactly know the way that Chaos is playing a lot of these uh, these defenses because they don't seem to be playing close enough to the site and their anchor players just are getting run over. Maybe this roam is just so disconnected that they don't have the wherewithal to sync up with the anchors and provide that covering fire. Chaos hasn't even been doing a sufficient job at fighting for, for draws or trades. You know you're likely going to get pinched or pushed. Crips, for example. He's been getting picked off in a couple rounds now, early. What ends up happening? There's nobody there to refrag him whatsoever. Yeah, and you've already got Snook and even taking damage this early into the round already. It's definitely not really, uh, it doesn't seem to be super coordinated from Chaos. It seems to be appropriate to their name. The Yokai drone giving the information of Goga up to the defenders. The C4 will miss. It'll blow up at the feet of the glass. Red Groove will tag in his second robotic ally, as that's the last Yokai that's left. It's playing just outside of luggage. So, or playing just inside of billiards. My apologies. Goga is playing just inside of luggage. So, waiting to see if Crips is going to be able to make it up the stairs or whether Goga is going to have his site trained. And, there you go. It sounds like the MPX gets a couple shots off. Renewals does spot Goga, so Goga will have to throw down a smoke to try and keep himself alive. Secretly gets found. Fabian getting a very important frag, and then on the midst 
of the billiard billboard table. Billiard table. <laughs> oh man, too much happening. Jonas will have to fall off. He's gonna breathe in a lot of toxic gas and scramble to relocate. Crips one shot through the open doorway inside of luggage, and he's gonna sustain a ton of damage. Fabian picks up a second kill, refragged by Renewals, who's refragged by Kanto. So everybody here getting involved in the fun. Red Groove uh, able to find the bait that he wants. Finally finds the head, only to have it taken off of his. Unfortunate for him. That was at least a bit better of a round from Chaos, and good play by Snook in getting not only the smoke kill, but also pushing them off this, what should have been a good defuse plant. I thought they were in a good position. I felt like they were going to be able to get that plant down in time, but pushing them off, it definitely put a bit more pressure on, but it just seemed like G2 were able to recollect themselves at that point and go, okay, we're just going to get set up to repush this. We know where people are playing at. And uh, it just not enough shots landed from Chaos to be able to actually finish it, especially on that window that you just saw there. Excellent coverage from G2 once again. Having the presence on the big window, nobody from Chaos had the wherewithal or ability to rotate down and pressure Kanto by going into Sunrise Bar and possibly shooting out the shooting out the window, by going out of the main door onto the hookah balcony, by going out of the main door through the foyer down by Sunrise as well. Opportunities abound for Attackers need to locate and uh, chaos here they can. to be able to put pressure on G2, but they just could not do it. No real standout performances from Chaos right now. Every single member of the team has been doing Attackers their best. And I don't say that in, in a in a disparaging way, but G2 just managed to take four rounds off of you on attack. Fine. That's not standard for a coastline. You know, usually 3-2, 4-1. That's typically the scoreline that we see for attackers here. But G2 did it without using a single hard breacher. Yeah, they didn't need it. And they got Diffuser down in three of those five rounds. They only won one round without the Diffuser going down, and Jonas was coming within seconds of being able to do so. G2 moving to defense here. Five seconds left before oh, this Frost strategy has come out before. At one point, uh, Fabian Attack claiming that Frost had the Attack highest KD of any operator because of the one game he played a couple seasons ago. An interesting strategy to see exactly how it's going to work out for them. This is going to be the real test for Chaos. You need to win at least one or two of these attack rounds to hang in there. I mean, if they fail to win more than two, well, then that's going to be all she wrote as G2 three rounds, and, well, they, they win when they hit six. So... For Chaos, lots of killing potential. A Zofia, an Ash, and a Blackbeard means that they're going to be trying their best to play aggressively. And Chaos's best look in that first round, and then onwards, was when Chaos kept taking the fight to G2. And speaking of, they'll take it straight to Fabian. The Frost playing inside a kitchen will find Renewals, and Renewals will end up getting the last laugh on that one. Say goodbye to the Frost, but still those three mats should likely still be there. A run out from Kanto Ricchetti using Legion's weapon will not have an ACOG and not be able to go much for a long line of sight, but possibly could have been a thorn in the side of Chaos if one of them had been spotted. Either way, they know now know that no one's on that balcony. It did provide probably a little bit of distraction once he was marked. Kanto has taken some damage in return, though. And G2 are actually a bit on the back foot here after losing Attack Fabian as well. So it seems like the Attack untouched the Chaos have potential, but they're not getting a ton of map control. And then a run out from Pangu. That's how you use that ACOG, but good trade on it, Goga. He's going to need to juice himself back up. Goga, as you mentioned, gets traded off Kanto Ricchetti. Now trying to use both his goo mines and his weapons, try to keep everybody at bay. Pengu will heal himself back up to full health and he'll essentially hit the reset button. Whether he'll go for a run out again, no, he's gonna barricade the door wisely. And it's gonna be a 3v3, whether he'll be able to get back to Kanto Ricchetti to possibly help Kanto get uh, a little bit more life as Kanto sitting just above half for the time being. This is the reason why a lot of these teams do run the dock. But what bodes well for Chaos? There you go. You'll see the Stim Pistol will hit Kanto. What does bode very well for Chaos is they still have that killing potential of the Ash on Crips, but you don't necessarily need the Ash to do it. Great angle here being played. Oh, Pengu all the way down. He takes Secretly's head off. That is a routine shot. Pengu makes those quite often. Final member of Chaos is Red Groove. He sees the lesion and well, he'll try to go for the down, but Kanto Ricchetti channeling his best uh, Neo and just dancing around the bullets. G2 up five to one. That was definitely a much scrappier fight. It, it did have some advantage for Chaos early on. They were able to get some uh, 
get a kill into Fabian, do some damage and things like that, but it just slowed down so much after that. The run out from Pengu definitely made a difference as well. It seemed like Chaos were starting to kind of recollect themselves for an attempted push to start to try and get some map control. And just as soon as that happened, all of a sudden now they had to question a lot of their flanks. Of course, Pengu didn't have to keep re-peaking that, but it put a lot of pressure on them. And they had to start worrying a bit more about where a lot of the players from G2 were at that point. And then, of course, the gunfights just being continuously won by members of G2, especially Kanto. Not to mention the Doc as well, being able to heal himself back up as well as Kanto. Definitely helped Fabian. Going to bring the meme here. We'll see. He's he's tending to die at the beginning of the round regardless, so at least he'll leave a turret in his wake. Nope. Going to switch to Alibi instead. But Pengu also, that super long shot that you saw him get through Kitchen, that was fantastic trade back onto Secretly. Attack well done. And a nice and angle. Just, these guys know these maps so well. So many good angles. Not a surprise to see you play like that, but it definitely surprised Secretly. Yeah, I mean, that was probably the best round and best opportunity that Chaos had to take a round off of G2 since round number one. And I don't know. It didn't seem like Chaos went on their drones. It, it didn't really seem like... It didn't really seem like Chaos figured out where both Pengu and Kanto were playing. It, it didn't It didn't look like they were able to coordinate and yeah, use the fact go. that it was a 3v2 in their favor to try to continue that snowball. Five seconds to insertion. I gotta imagine when you're playing against a team like G2, you start to get intimidated. And when you're in a 4-1 situation as well, that intimidation just builds, builds, and builds. And then when you've got people running out on you, killing you, that just, it brings you to a certain mental level where you're not playing at the top of your game anymore. You start to lose just that sense of control that you have over the round. And I think that's what I mean, where, where he, that peak out by him, that, that Pengu by getting that kill, that sets them in kind of a death spiral position where they're gonna start to lose any sense of control of the map itself. I mean, this Chaos needs to get some points here because right now they might not be in supremacy levels of Dire Straits, but they are, at the bomb. moment, not doing so hot in regards to the rest of the standings. Now, Vitality, in their matchup against Maka today, that's a very big match for the French squad. It's it's not outside of the realm of possibility that Chaos will be one of the two teams that will likely be sitting in relegations. Even to be able to get one point here would be huge. Now, trying to do so against a team that has only drawn once and has not lost at all, usually those are pretty damning odds for most yeah. teams. And by the scoreline, as we see, even though Kanto's gonna take a ton of damage, the best fragger right now on G2, sitting above double digits, this is going to be G2 with yet another week and no loss, because at worst, G2 will tie. There we go. Pengu doing good with that dock. They were definitely seeing him use those stim pistols, because if you're going to heal anyone, heal the guy that's just fragging out of his mind, as usual, Kanto, <laughs> as well as yourself, of course. And so I, I, it's good to see the dock getting actually used for his stim pistols, rather than just for the ACOG. It seems to be paying off. Kanto, despite playing with a, a gun that's maybe not the best long-range gun in the game, it's he's just absolutely tearing the members of uh, Chaos up with it. It's fantastic play by him. And you can see there's a lot of hesitation here on what to do from Chaos. They're just treading water above the site. You've got Snookin in a position that would typically be quite powerful to aid the rest of his team. He can tear open all of that wooded surface, but G2 is just going to try to answer back. Both Goga as well as Kanto from below doing their best just to try and keep every member of Chaos from standing still and preying upon G2. It's, it's impressive that uh, G2 are able to stay alive as well as they are despite all the holes in the floor up there. He's just dancing around in between them and trying to put pressure up on them as well to where they're just not able to really put much pressure in. Pengu's sitting at this angle. They're going to be so distracted by Kanto when they walk in. He's going to get that kill and Goga finally finishes off Red Groove. So it takes a little while and there's only 30 seconds to go for Chaos to get this execute under their belt. They'll lose Crips now too as that's G2 stacking up twice. A third as Pengu jumps in, Kanto gets his own and all it needs is Fabian for a team ace. Snookin tossing a frag grenade down and there's Goga picking up his second kill and even though the meme is 6-2, 6-2, 6-2 G2, they broke it last week with a 6-3 victory and they'll try to set the universe back in sync with a 6-1 victory. Yeah, that averages time. out to the 6-2, that's, that's good. It sure does. <laughs> Excellent performance from every member of G2. In regards to Chaos, a tough matchup overall and hard to find yourself playing against a team that really doesn't look like they're set to lose any time. Snookin top fragging for Chaos, but 
that's really all the team was able to put together. I definitely don't think Chaos played badly. They just were not playing it anywhere near the level G2 is. It's, I mean, that's a hard, hard bar to try and come even close to at that point. But G2 definitely not slacking. I mean, that's, that's what you need to do, right, is catch G2 on a day when they're just not taking it seriously or slacking.